the fight for the 1988 Olympic all-around gold medal is often considered one of the most epic and iconic battles in the history of women's artistic gymnastics. Soviet Yelena Shushanova and Romanian Daniela Silovash fought tooth and nail, round after round, routine after routine, 12 of them in all. It was an incredibly close and agonizing duel, literally taking place over three separate days of competition. The culmination was impeccably dramatic, with Shushanova coming from behind on the very last event and pulling out the victory. The scoring margin of Shushanova's triumph was a mere 25 thousandths of a point, by far the tightest contest the sport had ever seen. This competition showed an incredible display of strength and determination from both women, with neither one willing to give up, and both doing whatever it took to come out on top. As Daniela Silovash stood on the podium accepting her silver medal, she would have no way of knowing that in less than a year's time, she would find herself yet again smack dab in the middle of another iconic tour de force against a Soviet opponent. Only the difference between the two would turn out to be even tinier than the .025 that had occurred in Seoul. The 1989 European Championships in Brussels was the first major meet of the new quadrennium, and many changes had been enacted. As with every four years, there was a new code of points, the Bible by which each new routine was created. The new code allowed up to three additional tenths and bonus for original skills and combinations. This allowed gymnasts to really stand out and make their mark and disincentivize the practice of creating similar cookie cutter routines. Also, scores would no longer carry over from previous rounds of competition. Prior to this, gymnast scores from the team competition would be divided, with the total from the all-around final added in order to determine the final results. Now everyone would start from scratch. This groundbreaking new rule was known as New Life. As there was no team competition at Europeans, this would not impact the all-around, but it would come into play during event finals. Many gymnastics enthusiasts may have been surprised that Silovash kept training after Seoul, as at nearly 19 years of age, she had surpassed the average retirement age for a female gymnast. The only problem was, she was almost 19 solely by the birth year on her passport. Her age had been falsified by the Romanian Federation many years prior to this. In reality, she actually was two years younger than that, and only one year older than the girl who would become her main rival, Delany. Svetlana Leonidovna Baginskaya had been through a metaphorical hell of sorts since the conclusion of the Olympics in Seoul. Her coach and second mother from the time she'd started gymnastics, Lyubov Miramanova, had tragically taken her own life just days after the closing ceremonies. And in her beloved coach's absence, Baginskaya had found herself directionless, flailing about without purpose. Somehow, she found not only the strength to continue, but to persevere with even more grit and determination. She became even hungrier and more focused to achieve success and honor her late coach's memory. Baginskaya had been the number two Soviet in Seoul behind Shushanova, and with the retirement of Yelena, she was now the top dog in the kennel. As the final round of the women's all-around got underway in Brussels, the top two contenders would be competing directly head-to-head -head on the same event in each rotation. Unlike current days where there is a ranked rotation order dependent on the results from the qualification round, this order was determined randomly in 1989. And as with Silovash Shushanova in 88, the top two would be able to suss out their competition right before their very eyes, and each would know exactly what was needed in order to gain the competitive edge. Both gymnasts would be competing in Olympic order commencing on vault, with Silovash going first. In fact, Baginskaya would have the luxury of going after her rival on every single event. 
Daniela stuck her second vault cold, and to give credit where credit is due, her vaulting had improved quite a bit from the prior year at the Olympics. Many of the pre-flight issues remained, but she showed more power and was justly rewarded with a 9.975. As the reigning Olympic vault champion, Baginskaya should have had the advantage on this apparatus, but she was unable to find the landing on either vault and was forced to count the slightly better second one, which had scored 9.937. A quick perusal of any gymnastics results archive will show that Daniela Silivash was an exceptional bars worker. She had performed four uneven bars routines in Seoul. She had received four perfect tens from the judges. Here, during her all-around bars routine at Europeans, she did a good job with her handstands, but her single bar releases lacked amplitude, particularly her delchev, and she had the tiniest of adjustments on her free hip or any dismount. Her score, a 9.962. No event was in such a state of flux throughout this era as much as the asymmetrical bars. The event was in the midst of a radical transformation as the bars continued to move further and further apart. What had once been closer to men's parallel bars in terms of the utilization of each bar was becoming more akin to men's high bar, with the low bar playing a supporting role 99% of the time. Beginskaya's low bar work was pretty insignificant and not particularly memorable, and she performed only one single bar release on the high bar, a Tukachev. But her swing was great, as was her innovative toe-on, toe-off to handstand. She did have a significant cowboy on her tuck double back flyaway, but the landing was 10 out of 10. Perfection. Despite that, her score of 9.95 had her behind Silivash for the second event in a row. So at the halfway point, Silivash had a half of a tenth point lead over Baginskaya, and as both women had their weakest events behind them, there was no question that Daniela was definitely in the driver's seat. But as we all know, anything can happen in gymnastics, and both were more than capable of magic on the final two events. Interestingly, one could argue that Silavash's beam routine during the all-around final in Seoul is what cost her the Olympic title, and on the dreaded full turn requirement of all things. In Brussels, she started off pretty well, although it was pretty apparent that she was working through her nerves. On her second flight series of back handspring step out into a whip slash pike back, she had a moderately significant bobble and then a small shuffle on her dismount series of two back handsprings to a tuck double back. The judges gave her a 9.925, opening the door just a tiny bit. Svetlana definitely smelled the blood in the water. She showed no hesitation and pure confidence in performing a virtually flawless beam set. It had the originality the judges were looking for with her front somersault mount. She also had a beautiful look on beam with gorgeous line. Her switch sleep was definitely iffy in terms of amplitude, but otherwise there appeared to be little to take. And she's handling the pressure so well. Years of experience paying off. So far, no fault. The judges agreed and her 9.975 evaporated Silavash's lead entirely. And just like that, the two were dead even and tied heading into the final event, floor exercise. Moving over to floor in the final rotation, Silavash went first, as she had all day. She did a wonderful exercise with good tumbling, wonderful expression, and good variety. Silivash, still somewhat of a pixie, has matured and a real crowd pleaser. However, she chose to dismount with a relatively simple tuck double back, although she impressively showed zero movement on landing. This was a downgrade from the prior two world championships where she had dismounted with a full in. The choice to do the double tuck was somewhat logical considering Baginskaya had not even been capable of that in Seoul, where she had finished with a front through to a double full. 
only we weren't in Seoul anymore. In early 1988, Baginskaya began having a mental block on her tuck double back dismount on floor. In fact, she had fallen on it at a meet prior to Seoul. It had gotten so bad that she'd become afraid to do it, which had resulted in the watered-down tumbling she displayed at the Olympics. But had she conquered her demon? Silavash's score on floor was a 9.987, meaning one of her four counting scores was a 9.95. As Bizet's Carmen began to fill the arena, Baginskaya knew that she needed perfection to take the European title. Svetlana mounted her routine with a piked full in, more difficult than the tucked variation Daniela had performed out of a whip back. In terms of choreography, Baginskaya's Carmen is next level. It is a feast for the eye with an avant-garde flair. The way the dance is repeated for maximum impact is incredibly successful. I'll never forget the first time I saw this routine. I was blown away because I had never seen anything so refreshingly different, so out of the box. Breathtaking work really, as nearly all of Baginskaya's floor routines were. The highest of caliber. Raise yourself. She flies through the air on that second tumbling run so far, no mistakes. As Svetlana stood in the corner before her last pass, I wonder what she was thinking. Because for the only time in her career that I am aware of, she went for a tucked full in dismount. She landed with her chest a little low, but lunged out of it perfectly. That extra difficulty is absolutely something the judges were looking for. The R and the ROV. The judges had just seen Silavash and Baginskaya perform back to back. And while taste and style is somewhat subjective, difficulty, generally not so much. The judges really had no choice but to reward Baginskaya with the perfect 10, and with it, the European title. Her winning total over Silavash was a mere .013, the slimmest of margins for one of the most exciting head-to-head -head battles I've witnessed in all the decades I've followed gymnastics. Please comment down below. Thank you so much for watching. I really, really appreciate it. I hope everybody has a great day. Das Take care. Bye, loves.